I regret having my child. I was married for 15 years to my high school sweetheart. We had two beautiful kids, 13 and 9. For many reasons, we divorced. Skip to me starting to date again a year later. I meet an amazing woman almost right away. First month of dating again. We have a ton in common. We fall in love very quickly. She tells me early on that she wants kids. I had never wanted more kids. Two was more than enough for me. I had even made an appointment to get snipped later that year. But this woman is perfect for me and having kids is a deal breaker for her. So I decide I could do this all again for her, for us. I'm approaching 40 when we finally start trying. Due to some health complications, she's over 35 and has high blood pressure. We ended up having to do IVF. It worked and we were pregnant soon afterwards. But our son was born prematurely. They warned us this was a possibility due to her age slash health. He had to stay in the NICU for 3 months. My new wife developed postpartum due to the stress. We found out our son had cerebral palsy. A milder form, but he had it. Our world shifted from being a happy couple with a new baby to a depressed and stressed couple dealing with a child that has a lifelong disability. This is not how I perceived my second chance at happiness was going to be. I won't leave my wife, and I will love and take care of our son forever. But not a day goes by where I don't regret my decision to have more kids. I should have listened to my gut from the beginning and called off the relationship early on. She wanted kids, and I didn't. But I did this for her. Now I'm depressed, financially strained, and my future isn't the relaxing one I pictured. I can never tell my wife this of course. And I feel bad even writing this to you all of you. But I just needed to get it out. I killed an elderly man in front of his wife and basically his entire family. Forgive me for any misspellings or format I'm trying to do this on my phone. I haven't talked about this to anyone, even though it's been years, even my closest of friends, minus the ones that were there. One night when I was in college I was driving to get some liquor for a party my fraternity was supposed to throw the following night. I was taking a street I was very familiar with to get back to my house. It was dark, but the street was lit with street lamps. I remember that I looked at my radio for a second, just a second not very long at all. But when I looked back up to the road there was a man crossing. I didn't have any time to react, by the time I saw him, he had already hit the good of my car and bounced off the side. I remember screaming and hitting the brakes and the wash of horror of what had just happened. I'll admit I had thought about speeding away, but I pulled over to the side and ran out of my car to check on this guy. When I got to him his family was standing outside the restaurant he was leaving, and they were all screaming and crying. He has laying on the side of the road with blood coming out his nose and mouth. Two other men were standing with him trying to see if he was alright, and calling 911. All I could say was I didn't see him, I was frantic by the time it had set in what I had done. I sat on the curb across from the family and listened to their crying in agony while we waited for the paramedics to arrive. I sat there and sobbed while two paramedics took him away in an ambulance. I don't believe I've ever cried so hard and for so long. The worst part about all of it and what still kills me today was that his wife came over to me while I was distraught on that curb, sat next to me, placed her hand on my shoulder and said I was married to him for almost 50 years. We had a good life. Then she hugged me and said that she forgave me. After everything was said and done it was ruled that it was an accident. I wasn't charged with anything and I had one of my friends pick me up from the police station. I went down a dark path the years after that. I drank heavily, dropped out of college in my senior year and had to move back in with my mother and father because I couldn't hold on to a job. Even tried to kill myself with pills. It was a hard road to recovery which I feel I'm not fully recovered from nor do I feel I ever will be the same. But eventually I got my life back in order, joined up with the navy, and saw a bit of the world, and now I'm on track to go back to college and hopefully finish what I started there. It took almost a decade, but I finally start to feel almost whole again. I'm back to hanging with my friends and actually going out. So maybe there is a light at the end of the tunnel. 
I slept with my daughter's ex-boyfriend, he got me pregnant, and I had an abortion. They got back together and got married. This was back in, let me think, maybe 1997? I was 38 and my daughter was 18, and she was dating Harry, who was 24. I was an alcoholic, and dabbled in other drugs, mostly cocaine. I was not a good person, let alone mother. Not like I was abusive to my daughter or anything but I was generally inattentive, and cared more about my alcohol and drugs than her, especially in her teen years. I'm 14 years sober now. I disproved of my daughter dating Harry, but I never told her why. He would flirt with me, constantly, and the age difference also creeped me out. Also, he was an alcoholic and drug user, just like me. She broke up with him over his alcoholism. Soon after she moved away, not too far, but regardless she didn't live with me anymore. Harry kept calling me and asking if we wanted to get drinks, I turned him down, but then one day he said he had a bunch of coke and I couldn't resist. He came over, we did the coke, and we ended up having sex. He was a very good looking guy. He looked a lot like that ridiculous 80s Justin Bieber picture that was on the front page today, that is actually what made me think about him. For the next few months, maybe like 3 to 4 months, he would sometimes come over, and we would have sex, and do drugs, and get drunk together. Any drug addict knows what that is like to have a drug addict buddy in that way. Then I got pregnant. I knew it was by him, I had sex without a condom a few times stupidly. I never told him I was pregnant, and I went, and got the abortion, and kept it a secret. Anyways, I stopped seeing him after that, it was too weird. I also got sober, for like 4 months, before elapsing. Fast forward 2 years and my daughter contacts me, and tells me, that she got back with Harry, and that he is fully sober. I was mortified honestly. He was gonna tell her that we slept together, and she is going to hate me for life. They came over one day and said hi, and when my daughter was gone, Harry told me, that there is no reason, to tell her about what happened. I agreed. It's been 16 years of marriage on their part. They have a kid together. Harry got cancer, then beat it. I got sober. That's basically it. I don't see them very often. They live in Texas and I live on the east coast. But whenever I do there is always that tension between me and Harry. It's literally the first thing that comes to either of our minds. I can just tell. Not like sexual tension. Like why did we have to do that? What the fuck is wrong with us? Kind of tension. I think about this often. Especially when I see my grandson. I always think that could have been my son if things had gone differently. But wow what a disaster that would have been if I decided to keep that child. I watched my students beating their classmate and I ignored it. I'm a history teacher and in my class, 12, 13 yo, there's this little prick that always makes a lot of noise, keeps touching and messing with other kids and employees and makes mean, racist jokes about everyone. He is constantly trying to make my life and the life of his classmates hell thinking he is funny or something. In a nutshell, he is a bully. Yesterday he destroyed his group project, causing everyone in his group to fail. Although I'm giving more time for the rest of his group to remake all of their lost work, I already tried calling his mom, the bitch defends her precious son, that would never do such bad things, he's such a sweetie. Today I was walking to the teacher's room, to grab my coffee and I saw the kid being dragged to a corner, I knew what was going on the moment I saw it, and I just ignored what I saw, and kept going my way. The kid got roughed up and had to go home early while every soul at the class is silent shut about any suspects, but I believe that everyone in the class knew about this for some time now. I personally feel no remorse nor I plan to advance or help on the investigation. I just pretend nothing happened and gave my lecture as always. I lied to my best friend to get off the phone not knowing he was writing his suicide note and just wanted one last chat. One day after school I was with a few friends and we were all smoking. At some point during the session I got a call from my best friend who sounded a bit out of it and didn't really seem like he had any other intention than to just have a conversation. We spoke for about 2 minutes and then it was my turn in the circle. 
So I told my friend that my phone was about to die, so I was going to have to get back to him. The next day I awoke to multiple missed calls from his mother, I called her immediately and she told me that he had hanged himself and that he was in a coma. I would then go on to spend 4 days in a hospital by his side for the most part, on the 4th day they turned his life support off. During all of this, I checked his phone as I was the only person who knew his passcode, and I found a suicide note, the timestamp was around the time that he had called me the day before. I'm not sure if I will ever get over the fact that I gave up my last conversation ever with the greatest person I've ever known for a barn. Don't take those you love for granted.